This video will talk about the 2018 Mac Mini configuration that Apple is currently selling for over $4,000. Let's go! After watching Ibno's video on the 2014 Mac Mini and the possible use of eGPU, I started wondering if 2018 Mac Mini could replace my actual 2013-27 inch iMac that I'm still using in 2019. So I went to an apple.com online store to see the available configuration and specs and discovered that there is a maxed out configuration of the space gray little one sold for over $4,000. So I started wondering why Apple is selling a Mac Mini for such a high price and with such an high-end configuration. You can literally buy a Mac Pro or an iMac Pro base model. So why would you buy this for $4,000? But before we start, tell me what you would buy if you had that money. And if you have any questions, let's discuss in the comments. And if you didn't know about the 4000 Mac Mini, drop a like. So, now I'm going to compare all the specs to understand who is the 4000 Mac Mini for, and more importantly, if it's worth the money. I'm going to compare it to the entry line 2017 iMac Pro since it has a similar cost, and as far as the date of this video, it's the best Mac line available in terms of CPU processor. So, price. I configure my Mac Mini with the 6 core 8 gen Intercore i7 to boost up to 4.6 GHz. For the memory, I went all the way up to the 64 GB of 26666 MHz DDR4 super fast RAM. It's quite expensive for $1400. Just want to point out that in 2018 Mac Mini, the RAM is user accessible and upgradable, even if it's not super easy. I leave you a video in the description. Anyway, for the purpose of this video, I wanted to stay with Apple Store stock prices. For storage, I chose the top 2TB super fast SSD storage that costs another $1400 and then added the 10 gigabit Ethernet upgrade, a total of $4199. Comparing with iMac Pro baseline, we get a 3.2 GHz head-core Intel Xeon W processor with turbo boost up to 4.2 GHz, 32 GB of 2666 MHz ECC memory, 1TB SSD storage and also the 10 Gigabit Ethernet, but we have the best display I've ever seen so far, the 5K 27-inch Retina display, the beautiful 5120x2880p. So let's see how they compare for each spec and the value for the money. Processor The 2018 Mac Mini processor is super dope. In the Apple average product line it overturns all the other Mac lines, even the 2018 MacBook Pros in single core scores, beating all the iMac Pros and being second only to the 2017 iMac. Overall it is a 6 core processor and in the multi core score outperform again all the older Macs being beaten only by Mac Pros and iMac Pros. In conclusion, it is the cheapest Mac, which is good for both single and multi-core scores tasks. The 18 cores iMac Pro gets of course twice the score, but for the 8 core we are comparing right now it gets only 6000 more. So iMac Pro wins. Memory. With this price point we get the 64 gig of RAM on the Mac Mini against the 32 on the iMac Pro. Of course it will be overkill 64 gigs of RAM, for reference I'm using 24 gigs for heavy editing task in 4K, but this RAM is won by Mac Mini. Again, it would be pointless to have 2TB of SSD for regular user on a Mac Mini, but it totally wins against the 1TB Mac Pro. Having 4 Thunderbolt 3 ports, super fast technology up to 40 gigabits per second, 1TB or even 500 gigs of internal SSD could be more than enough for the Mac Mini and for the Mac OS. Relying on external storage with no problems of speed transfer and lagging. Of course right now Thunderbolt 3 external drives can be a little bit expensive unless you know how to build a cheap one. If you want me to show you how, drop a like. Again, the Mac Mini wins. IO. The 2018 Mac Mini has seen an important upgrade 
and is now comparable to the iMac Pro in terms of input-output. They both have 4 Thunderbolt 3 ports with that sweet 40 gigabit per second. The Mac Mini has only 2 USB 3.0 instead of 4 of the iMac. They both have 10 gigabit Ethernet and audio jack, but iMac has also an SD card reader, which is very nice even if it's placed behind the display, so it's not really reachable. Talking about video connection, they both support 5K displays, but the iMac Pro can handle also its display at 5K, so a total of 3 against 1 5K and 1 4K of the Mac Mini. The Mac Mini has an HDMI 2.0 port that can connect to a 4K TV for instance. Both can handle up to 4 4K displays and for a machine that is so small it's really stunning. So I guess for this one they are even. GPU being so small, the Mac Mini can fit a proper side GPU. It has Intel UHD Graphics 630, which, by the way, is less powerful than my 2013 iMac, the NVIDIA GeForce GT755. So, the iMac Pro with Vega 56 Radeon Pro graphics processor outperforms Mac Mini in all the GPU demanding tasks. This is why you will potentially use an external GPU of your choice connected via Thunderbolt 3 to help graphic performance, but this feature is not included in this comparison. Basically, without it, you can get acceptable results in gaming, video editing and graphics. This is why it's not called a Pro machine. Monitor, keyboard and mouse. The iMac Pro includes full-size Magic Mouse and Keyboard Gen 2 and the stunning 5K display. So for the extra money, getting all of this gives a bonus to the iMac Pro that wins the showdown. So in conclusion we have a difference of $800, but we have to keep in mind that the Mac Mini comes alone. In that $800 you have a Space Gray Full Magic Keyboard 2 and a Magic Mouse 2, a state-of-the-art internal GPU the Radeon Pro Vega 56 with 8GB of HBM2 memory and more importantly the 5K display. Honestly I don't think that with the extra money you can buy all of those things and also a $500 external GPU to power all of these and to be comparable in graphic tasks with the iMac Pro. So in my opinion if you don't want the all-in-one Mac style you could downgrade to 32GB of memory or even get 8 and manually install 32 and get 1 terabyte SSD or even a 500 gigs and rely on external SSD Thunderbolt 3 storage and then add a Thunderbolt 3 external GPU like the one linked in the description and buy not a 5K but a 4K monitor for around $500 like the LG27 UK 850W. I'm currently using and I can assure you it's stunning and you have the best value for the money in my opinion. Obviously I think the most wise thing is to wait for 2019 Mac Pro, an iMac line that will add 2019 standard components and will be much better. And let's leave the Mac Mini for the entry model for light use only. It's not a pro machine after all. In conclusion, why Apple lets you configure a Mac Mini with such powerful components? I'm not sure about the answer. My idea is that you can use as a server or as a hub for other Macs, but this is just my opinion since I would prefer an iMac Pro Redden than a Super Saiyan Mac Mini. So guys, I think this wraps up for today. I hope you find this video helpful, if you did be sure to drop a like and tell me in the comments if you will buy a 2018 Mac Mini or a 2017 iMac Pro. And as always, stay tuned on Shades of Tech. Ciao!